Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I had a job come in for a set of cuff links. Shouldn't take too long. Thought it would be a fun project to walk you guys through start to finish. We designed a quick model in a Libre. We've exported that as an IGES file and imported it into Sprout Cam. And I've made my tool path here. What we're going to do is cut this down to about a half inch deep, which is not the depth shown in the 3D model here. And then we'll use the bandsaw to split the two pieces and, and clean them up later. So I've got two tool paths. One is to rough out the shape. And then the other one, I'll use a 90 degree end mill to engrave these two angles here. So we'll take a quick look at our simulation. Should do one cleanup pass at the very bottom. There it is, perfect. And then the engraving. Okay, great. We're gonna make this out of piece of 4140. So let's head over to the mill and start cutting. We've got our part in the vise. I faced off the top so we've got a nice smooth surface. We're using a 3 8 inch four flute carbide end mill and let's make some chips. Let's uh, zoom in for a closer look at the engraving. You'll also notice this was a this cut has a really rough edge to it. The the bottom face is perfectly smooth, but that end mill is at the end of its life. We're going to use the bandsaw and cut off half of our length. We'll then stick the main chunk back in the mill. We'll face off the top of the remaining half and then we'll do the little engraving and then we'll do the same thing and we'll cut off the bottom half and then we'll have our two rough cufflinks. We've got our two pieces. We ran a file over the top just to make sure there were no edges standing up. Now what we're going to do is put them both in the jaws and mill the back sides square.
We've got our two parts. Now what we're gonna do is get rid of the tool marks. So I've got some 100 grit, 220 grit, and 320 grit sandpaper. And I've got a little granite surface block I use just for sanding stuff flat. doesn't take too much once you've got it level. Zoom in and show you where we're at. Just with the 100 and 220, you can see we've got a nice brushed look to them. I'll probably do the 320 and I think we'll leave it at that. If you wanted to, you could sand at higher grits and then even polish these and they would look like mirrors, but we're going to go with a brush looked on these. Okay, we've got a piece of 41 L40. It's the smallest diameter stock I've got, which will work fine. We're going to face this off and we're going to turn this down to 326. That's the appropriate diameter for the head of this set of cufflinks. And then we're going to use the bandsaw, I think, to cut that into two pieces, each 227 long, and then we're going to drill and ream those holes for a dowel pin to attach them to the body. This leaded stuff turns really easy. Five oh nine. We want to be at three twenty six. So ninety one and a half. We're going to take that in two. So we'll take forty five, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Okay, 421, 47 to go. Here are our two heads. I cut them off in the bandsaw and then just squared them off in the mill. I'm going to go throw these in the tumbler, which I'll show you here in a second. 
that I've got uh, just deburring the edges of the bodies so that they don't tear any fabric. Here are our bodies. They've been in here for about 45 minutes. They uh, look dirty, but they'll clean right up, and it just gives them a, it just deburs the edges without uh, changing the actual aesthetic or look of the part. I'm going to drop these two heads in here. Then later we'll go play a uh, needle in a haystack and dig them out using a magnet. Actually, it shouldn't be uh, too bad. Changed my mind. My wife and I have a dinner date tonight. These can tumble during then. I'm going to grab them and drill our holes to connect the body and the head. This guy was floating. Usually what I do is just turn it on and I'll see him one day while it's running. Yep. Okay, there's the other body. I'm going to pour this out now and we'll use a magnet to get the two heads out. That second one didn't want to be found, but I just grabbed another box and just doing this, moving it in between, running the magnet over, found it in uh, about 20 seconds. We're going to drill 0.175 into the head with a number 31 and then ream it to 124 for a press fit for an eighth inch dowel pin. And then in the bodies, we're going to drill down 125 and that's it. We've got the right spacing of depth for our head and body. We want, it, we want them to be just ever so slightly detached so it looks like they're separate pieces. I'm going to do this manually instead of with the CAM program. We know the dimensions of the head so we can use our indicator tool and just come over here and find the location. Better camera angle there, you're not going to be able to see zoomed in. So X0. That's Y0 now. We know the part is 326 wide and 260, or sorry, yeah, 324 wide and 226 deep. So we're on, we'll go to 00. zero. So that's the bottom left corner of the part, and we'll say that is now. 326 divided by 2, negative 0.163, and y is negative 0.113. Now we'll go back to 0, 0, but it should now be the middle of the part. We spot check it. That looks good. Now we'll find our height. That's z0. Okay. Now what I'm going to do first is manually spot it because you don't want to start a small diameter drill and have it risk walking on you. Won't take much. The tip of the drill bit is our Z0 point for the drill, the tool height. We actually want to go a little bit deeper then to get to a 175 hole depth because we, we want a full diameter hole depth so our reamer will go all the way down. So you basically want to measure the angle on the tip of the drill to about 50,000. So we're going to drill this down to uh, 215 thou. Like I said, we're going to do it manually. So we'll set our speed of 1850. Turn our spindle on and then G01 Z negative point 215 F 2.5 per G wizard. Turn our coolant on. Do a quick sanity check to make sure you're not going two inches or anything. And here we go. Okay, looks good. Let's 
swap out our reamer. I've already got it set up in the tool table. And now this one, we will go down to only 175. Okay, perfect. There's one head done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other guys off camera here, and we'll be back in a minute. We've got the four holes in, drilled and reamed for the body and heads. Now what we need to do is drill a hole on the back side of the bodies, and this will be for the uh, torpedo tube backer that I buy from a jewelry wholesale company. So it will look something like that. We'll use a number 35 drill and it's a press fit and I usually put a dab of uh, two-part epoxy in there. The better way to do this would probably be to uh, silver solder or braze it in there. Um, I do actually do a lot of cufflinks for people and I've been meaning to look into that, but for now uh, this works fine. We've got our drill in this spot. We're going to ease into the mark okay and then we're going to go down G01 Z negative point one six F two point five perfect I'm going to do the other one off camera. I'll be right back. They tumbled for a few hours. Just took them out. Let's use a degreaser just to clean them up a little. Okay. So they are going to look, you know, something like that. Now, what we want to do before, two things. I wasn't happy with the deburring of the edges on the heads. They must just have been too lightweight to really bounce around in there enough and get traction. That's okay. Um, the bodies, on the other hand, are just absolutely perfect. You can see it doesn't look like the edges are rounded over. Sometimes you'll see that, and it really affects the look of a part. Um, but these are nice and just just deburred. It's, it's great. I love that about that machine. It takes a few hours, but uh, you don't have to be there, so no big deal. What I'm going to do with these is we're going to put the dowel pin in these first, and then I'm going to uh, use that dowel pin to hold it while I put it under a scotch Bright wheel. That'll help deburr these a little more. Um, but first, what I decided I want to do is we're going to do a black fill in the, the um, two angle pieces here to make them pop a little bit more. So we're going to go grab a uh, can of spray paint. Okay, we're outside. Took some regular painting tape and masked off the top and the bottom edge. Not necessary, but it just helps keep the overspray from having you to chase down every little nook and cranny on the part. So let's go and take some flat black spray paint and fill these in. Okay, we'll let that dry for a minute and do a very light second coat. Okay, been a few minutes, we'll do a quick second coat. That should do it. We will definitely let this dry though uh, before we come back and, and start sanding off the excess. Okay, our paint has dried. Let's use our sandpaper and one at a time, carefully take that excess off. Perfect. Didn't doesn't take much. At this point I do want to sand in one direction to keep the grain having a nice brushed look. So let's uh, clean these off real quick with some palm pre, just a degreaser. Ok, 
Okay. We'll do some final cleanup yet again before we call these done. But the M's look real nice. I'm very happy with how those pop. Now let's turn our attention over to getting these heads deburred. Let's grab a vise. We're going to use that to hold the head as we tap in the dowel pin. Okay, like so. Got my dowel pins. I actually shortened these down from half inch, which were the only ones I had in stock, with a grinder and then just rounded off the edges with a sander. These are 0.3 inches long and we want about 0.175 inside the head. So this should be about 125 sticking out. We've got 150, so we'll tap it a little more. Might be all we get and that's okay. I do want a small gap. Let's uh, straighten out my part a little. Okay, it's probably all we're gonna get. Yeah, 150, that's okay. That should work. Feels like we hit bottom there. Yep. Just about the same dimension, 155. That ah, 147. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now, good. Service finish is still fine on those heads. To deburr these, I'm going to stick them in a 5C collet the one eighth incher just sticking out there a little and we will go over actually we'll, I'll bring the grinder over here so you can see it on camera and we will scotch bright these it's actually a, a buffing wheel unit I call it a grinder because I keep it in with the grinders so I've got a scotch bright wheel on here we're going to try and deburr these edges <laughs> Perfect. Let's do the other one. Perfect. To hold the head in the vise, I'm going to use a piece of shim stock. So let me clamp down. I'm pretty hard on it and I shouldn't shouldn't mar the surface. I can always sand it and clean it up if I do but hopefully this will keep it nice and neat. And you want a tight clamp so it doesn't slip. Now what we can do, is we can hammer the head on, or the body on, like so. Perfect, and I don't want to use, even with a brass hammer, actually, you know what, we'll try, I was gonna say use a piece of wood, we'll try with a rubber mallet to get it started. Perfect. Oh, actually that's gonna do a great job. Now what I'll do is I'll use a piece of wood. That way I don't mar my finish. I did one final degrease, blew them off with the air hose, and then I've got them on a cloth here. And the goal now is to, to get, keep your fingerprints off of them. And I'm gonna use some of this stuff called Renaissance Wax, which is a uh, wax I've used before to help keep fingerprints and um, human skin oils from affecting the cuff, cufflinks or steel or whatever. So you just put some on And like so, I'll finish this up off camera here and we'll be back and we'll put the uh, torpedo backs in. 
Let's mix up some JB Weld. Won't take much. Okay, now I admit, I don't really like doing this on camera because I take my time and I always feel like on camera I'm trying to keep the video footage to the point, but uh, what I do is I try to get the JB Weld into this hole without get it with it getting as little as I can outside the hole. You can clean it up and it won't be, it won't be a problem, but nevertheless. Try to get it in there. And then always the trick is when you want to pull off, you kind of got to figure out how you roll up the excess so it doesn't splatter over the part like that. Now I'll clean off the toothpick and I'll stick it in there and kind of try to get it to drop down, get rid of the air pockets and over again. So not the most uh, exciting footage here, um, but you get the idea. And that's probably enough because you're going to be displacing a fair amount of the volume from uh, with this tip. Now what I'll also do is I'll put some inside this uh, the hole of this tip right here. Sorry if you can see that, it's maybe out of focus. Um, not too much, because you don't have to, you know, you don't have to worry too much about this not holding, I'll be honest, my, in my experience at least. Okay, wipe off some of the excess there. Okay. Now, the alignment will go like so. Okay, that's going to push in hard. We'll pinch it just a smidgen with uh, our pliers. There we go. Okay, you do want to make sure it's even. <clears throat> and then now comes the fun part. If you can see, we did have a little, we had a normal amount pop up. And that's okay. I don't actually want to get rid of all that. I'm just going to try to get rid of some of it. And you just got to be careful here. You don't end up doing more harm than good by spreading it over your part. That's a lot of little steps of cleaning up your toothpick. And if you get in a real bind, um, wetting a Q-tip is a little bit more effective, but try not to do that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to call that good. Now that'll take, this is the normal JB well, so that'll take 24 hours to cure, but I'm very happy with that. I'm going to do the other one off camera and then we'll be done. I've got them in a little case here. The backs haven't totally dried. But as you can see, uh, these turned out great. I think the customer will, customer will be very happy. And for now, folks, that's a wrap. If you've enjoyed this video, please comment below or like it. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.